Even the graduates of Harvard and Oxford produce evil individuals. How do we solve this problem? We'll find out in this episode of Inverse. Intelligence is not an indicator of morality. We're going to be studying the book of James, chapter 3, and looking at the concept of wisdom. In the studio with me is Sebastian, Siku, and Callie. Hello. My name is Justin Kim, and you're on Inverse. We want to encourage you to go to inversebible.org and download our Bible study guide. There you'll see instructions for our app, for our books, for our all the things underneath the sun regarding Inverse Bible Study Guide. We're going to go to Siku, if you can pray for us as we read the Bible. All right, let's pray. Loving Father, we ask for divine wisdom now as we read your word, that we would understand the truths in your word so that they could transform our lives and we can be a blessing to others as well. We pray these things in your loving name. Amen. 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 Sebastian, verse 13 and onwards until we get tired. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Who is wise and understanding among you? Mm. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. All right. Thanks, uh, Sebastian. Um, when we look at uh, this uh, passage, Callie, mm -hmm. um, so, as James does, he kind of goes here and then here and then here and here. And some of the transitions are a little bit wonky. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some places there shouldn't be a transition. Maybe <laughs> he's just kind of like, by the way, let's just talk about words for a second. <laughs> uh, and then on the other parts, there is yes. a, there is, once you connect it, it is profound. Mm -hmm. um, he starts, all of a sudden, we've been talking about words, haven't we, in chapter 3? Mm -hmm. And then now he goes into wisdom and then talking about all these, you know, the, the wisdom dialogue. Yeah. What is the connection? And it, it's not always clear. Yeah, as always, I'm not sure if I'm going to say what you want, mm. but I'm going to say okay. something. It's okay. I want, if there is no right or wrong, I want to hear what you have to okay. say your take on it. So I think in, in chapter two, right, we talked about faith without works is dead, and then kind of like zoned in on one expression of okay. works, which is words. Yes. And then it's also going to hear about, make sure, so verse 13, who is wise to understand among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Okay. So we've talked about works, right? So you need to works from... You go with me? Yes. 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 Confused. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so works, works, works. <laughs> yes. But works. I'm with you. I'm not with James all the time. So, so that's, what that's I'm fair. Asking. Help me. Yes. So here, works need to be done in the meekness of wisdom, mm -hmm. and say, okay, what does that mean? Yes. And then he's like, well, let me tell you what that means. Okay. And then he explains what what true wisdom is like, um, and what it's not, and how that. Uh, expresses itself in different ways. So that's what verse 17 is about. It's like the true wisdom. And then verse 14 and 15 is talking about this. This is not the right, this is bad. This is like demonic wisdom. That is not what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. But this is other kind of wisdom. Sometimes I wonder if like the ancients, like maybe, the, maybe someone should help them with some chapterization and some <laughs> chapter titles. I support I mean, that. that would help. And, <laughs> with, and I know in our Bibles, we have our sub, sub, sub columns or subtitles and whatever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they help, sometimes they don't. Uh, yeah. And I want to know what the flow and sometimes I think maybe the ancients kind of just talked in cyclical terms. They're just like, you know, yeah. just talking about this, about the, the color yellow and then your glasses and then Sebastian's, you know, pink shirt. Like maybe it's just a random <laughs> thing. Um, but as you, but there, are, there are linkages. Yeah, yeah. there is w words, works. These are themes that we see and it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. And even just a small thing like in verse 17 where it's talking about verse wisdom 17? that mm -hmm. is from above. He says it's without partiality, without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yes. he already hammered that point back in chapter two. Yeah. So there's kind of, there's these connections 
options again like you've talked about works for a while now we're talking about the kind of work so mm -hmm. i think it's i think it's kind of both where there is there it's some it's thematic and it's also cyclical mm -hmm. a little yeah. bit of spaghetti action going on yeah. here rather there than spaghetti. the the waffle section okay correct you guys get that you get it if you don't then <laughs> Pray about it, and we'll, right. we'll talk about it. <laughs> Pray about yeah. it. Yeah. So help us out. What, what are some, some juice right that we can get? As I say, as we juice this and put this mm -hmm. into the the Vitamix mixer, what is some what are some things that we can get out of observations there? Siku. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think <laughs> I, when you when you look at James chapter three, James and, chapter three, and Callie's point about verse thirteen, where he mm -hmm. says, "Make sure that your works are done in the meekness of wisdom." Mm -hmm. And immediately the, the, con, the, the conflating or the bringing together of, of meekness and wisdom are things that I th don't really see people promoting very often. Mm. Mm -hmm. You think that when a person is wise or when a person is knowledgeable or who has a person who has understanding, they're kind of like this condescending like, oh, you know, it's like the, <laughs> when I used to read Sherlock Holmes as a kid. And then it's like, you know, elementary, my dear Watson. Like, he's oh, always yeah. talking to Watson like this dude is like an idiot and he's like far behind him. Yeah. And Watson's like asking questions like, wait, how would he ever have accomplished this? And it's like, oh, elementary, right? And it's this very <laughs> condescending attitude like, it's very condescending. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. Neanderthal, like maybe you'll <laughs> catch up later on. And so James, James is first connecting this quality of wisdom with meekness and humility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This sense of I'm not easily provoked even though I may know. And you see this so exemplified in the life of Jesus, knowing full well that he had so much more to say, so much more to teach than what he said. And he entered into conversations in which he clearly was the smartest man in the room. Mm -hmm. And yet that's not how Jesus carried himself. Yeah. That his wisdom that he brought into life, into every situation was always accompanied in meekness. Mm -hmm. And that his goal was not to pontif pontificate or to present his wisdom and understanding, but was to make sure that wisdom was not buffered or hindered or held back or shrouded by his inflated sense of self mm -hmm. because of how wise he was. I, I love that phrase that you use, that, you, that uh, the smartest man in the room, uh, mm -hmm. this meekness of wisdom is you enter into a room and there are some people who by default, they think they are the smartest person in the mm -hmm. room and their attitude reflects that. But as a Christian, that is not to be our case. Whether that be the case or not, the attitude overrides that. Yes. Uh, I mentioned in my opener that um, there are universities out there who are the greatest inst academic institutions of the world, but they have a high, uh, huge problem with morality, mm -hmm. with yeah. ethics. Yeah. And uh, I was told that Harvard University had a, a justice class, an ethics class, because many of their graduates, not all, and there are some wonderful people who have graduated from <laughs> Harvard University, <laughs> but there is also a disproportionate am amount who would graduate, and they have all the skills necessary and the intelligence to, to, uh, to utilize the intelligence for for crime, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. or what they call white, white collar, collar crimes, crime. oh, and no. going into yep. the, the the stock market and whatnot, and the legal affairs, and to, they're not working righteousness there. <laughs> That's they right. Work. They have a lot of knowledge. They have a lot of wisdom, wisdom, yeah. correct, uh, but not so much morality and, and righteousness. Kelly, yeah. I, I was just reflecting kind of on what Sebastian was saying too. Of I, there are people in my life who I say they're very wise, but they're it depends on how they wield their wisdom. Mm on whether or not I'm going to ask my questions to them. Hmm. Because mm -hmm. there's a way to be taught something that makes you feel smart, smart. for asking. Mm -hmm. And there's ways mm -hmm. to be told That's something right. that you're like, I feel like an idiot for bringing this up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the knowledge, but I wish I never would have asked. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a way to, to do that. And that really does come from a way of humility. Mm. Like, am I going to wield my knowledge? Do I wield this, this piece of information that I have as a way to put you further down? Or to be like, oh, yeah, I'm happy to explain that to you. Mm -hmm. And we come back up because we're peers, because going back to partiality, I'm not better than you because I know this. I just know it and you don't, so let's know it together. Mm -hmm. And mm. that's just a different attitude. And so people who are generous and who are liberal with what they have, that just, that is meekness. Mm -hmm. Because I think they also know, like, uh, I, I'm just reminded again of, of the beginning of chapter, or sorry, beginning of verse 17. Like they know they're, even their wisdom is from above. Mm -hmm. It's not something they conjured themselves, it's not something they earned. It's something they're like, yeah, this is from Jesus. So I'm happy to share it with you. Like it's not mine anyways. Mm -hmm. So I'm just sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Siku. Um, just going with the, 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 the way that people wield their knowledge, right? Um, verse 13, uh, when it talks about those who show their good conduct, 
you show that your works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So wisdom has a characteristic of being meek mm -hmm. in this sense. Um, it makes me think of in verse in chapter one where it talks about if you're lacking <laughs> wisdom. In verse chapter one. In, okay, yeah. chapter, one. <laughs> in chapter one, in verse five. In verse five. <laughs> one, it talks about if anyone is lacking wisdom, let him ask of God yeah, who you. gives oh, cool. liberally, okay, cool. right? Without reproach, it will be given to him. Mm -hmm. So God, so when he's now contrasting this wisdom that's from above and wisdom that's from beneath, he's already told you that if you're lacking wisdom, ask from God because there's another place that you could get wisdom. Mm. Yeah, which but, is not a good place. Right, which is not a good place. <laughs> and then what, I, what I see him doing here is parsing, um, there's a type of wisdom that, uh, that has a character, the characteristics of that wisdom are not, a godly character, so to speak, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. right? And then the characteristics of the wisdom that's from above is a godly character. Yes. So it's not just about knowledge. So this is to Kelly's point, I guess I was saying. Yeah. Um, it's not just about having knowledge, but it's how that knowledge works itself out, right? It's not just about knowing stuff, but it's about how you treat people when you mm -hmm. know stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. How you handle a situation based on what you know. Um, very interesting. There's, there's a social ethical component to Voila, wisdom. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wisdom isn't just some uh, it's abstract not inf ideal just to atta attain yeah. by yourself. Mm -hmm. right. It's not just information. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a there is a social component. Actually, I mean, all the chapters here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's not faith by yourself. It's not just when you're you know righteous by yourself. But there is a certain uh, a, a, a social yeah. component to that. That's right. Uh, Interactive, interpersonal. Very real. Very very and real religion here. Going back to that theme. And to, to even contrast that a little bit or complement that, maybe is the better word, is when you look down in, in chapter 3 in verse 15 where it says, this wisdom does not descend from above. Okay. Right? And so, but the wisdom that is from above in verse 17 beckons us back to chapter 1 in verse 17 where it says every oh, yeah. good gift and every perfect gift comes, is from above it comes down. Mm. and comes yeah. down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation I love the thematic elements of turning, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. right? So here we see yeah. that <laughs> a, a person can get wisdom that doesn't come from God. Yep. Mm. That there is a, such a wisdom that exists. And this means that my Caribbean roots, which emphasize education to a degree mm. that is like merciless, mm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you're going to get two, three PhDs, you're going to have four or five jobs, you're going to do this and that and a third, but the reality is there's a limitation to this wisdom, and that's not necessarily the wisdom that comes from above. Mm -hmm. You're just making an educated imbecile, mm -hmm. right? You're just creating a person who's a knowledgeable criminal mm -hmm. to be able to execute their malevolent schemes. Hold that thought, Sebastian. We're going to hold, uh, we, gotta, we, we want to hear your wisdom here. Mm -hmm. We've got to go to a break, so stay with us. This is Inverse. Welcome back. We're in James chapter 3, looking at the topic of wisdom. Wisdom that is from above, that does not descend, and wisdom that is below. So, Sebastian, share with us some more wisdom. So, this is... <laughs> from above. <laughs> from above. Amen. Yeah, the right wisdom, Sebastian. And, and this is exactly the point, that pers people can share wisdom with you that is not from above, mm. but that is from beneath, that comes from this base side of humanity, which James calls demonic. Mm. And I remember you know, first getting into business and entrepreneurship and you sort of idolize these people who are so successful, yeah. building these multi-billion dollar companies and you're like, this dude is so smart. He literally invented this business model. The advertising model was invented by someone. Like, oh, this is how we can monetize this and make a whole bunch of money. And the reality is they completely changed marketing, completely changed how business is done. But yet when you sit down with these people and you talk to them, or you're sitting in a workshop with this person and the way they're explaining, they're like, listen, man, we're just all about the money. Like, this is what we're here for. You need to be greedy and you need to get it and you need to be the first one in the room, mm -hmm. right? And so here's the reality that this guy was telling us as finance people that if we go into investment banking, he's like, look, if you go into a room of millionaires and you sit down with them and you should not be intimidated, they need you to figure out what to do with their money. So he said, one time I was in New York, blah, 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 walked into a room full of investors and called them out of their names. I'm not going to repeat that on television. And it basically was like, you guys are going to give me your money, and this is what you're going to do. And the contract's are already on the table, so just sign. No need to ask questions, because you're not going to understand anything I'm going to explain to you. 
Mm. But I'm going to make you a lot of money and you're going to be really happy. And you can go with your family on a beach in Monaco and call me in six months and I'll let you know how it's going. And you're like, this, this is who I'm studying to become as a finance person. Mm -hmm. So and what happened, Sebastian? So, I mean, <laughs> in the end, I, <laughs> so, I mean, in the end my, my point in all of that was I left the workshop and realized that wasn't for me. Right? Mm. That was my interpretation of that path where I was going in mm. terms of investment mm -hmm. banking um, was the fact that, yeah, you seem to know a lot. You can really interact with a lot of industries if you go that direction in finance, that stock market, public offering. But then you realize, like, if this is what I need to become mm -hmm. in order yeah. to do that job because of my love for Christ, I just didn't see yeah. my Christianity being able to interact with that. And I think J James is trying to drive home the point, don't fall into that trap that all wisdom is good wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I appreciate the story. Uh, the, what I'm mining from your story is Christians see through the lens of character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the wisdom, and there, and there is wisdom there yeah. of, of, of stock market and how to like do and how to and all these <laughs> things. <laughs> right. But where, what is the character that emerges through that wisdom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And too often we lose the baby with the bathwater. <laughs> yeah. uh, is that even right? Throw out uh, the baby with yeah, the bathwater. And then, uh, when we lose Jesus in all of it mm -hmm. by, by, by attaining what the world's mm -hmm. standards for, for wisdom are. Yeah. Right. And, and to, to speaking to the baby and the bathwater thing, um, sometimes because there have been some very evil masterminds and mm -hmm. we have seen that, we can throw out the baby mm -hmm. in that we throw out the wisdom, mm. right? James is not saying don't have wisdom. Actually, he's saying you should. Yeah. Who is wise and understanding? Let him show good work, good, good conduct, that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. He's saying you ought to be wise. You right. You ought to do your works in meekness of wisdom. So this is something that's desirable. And then he's cautioning against what kind of wisdom that you are, what, what right. framework you're operating under. Um, and we should be desiring the kind of wisdom that comes from above. That's to say, sometimes you know. Um, I've seen a version of Christianity that shuns education, you yeah. know, because, yeah. well, True. I don't yeah, want to be a Pharisee. Yeah. You know, right. the Pharisees rejected Jesus and they were the most educated. Therefore, I will not be educated. <laughs> no. Paul was educated. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's uh, you, what you can accomplish yeah. with Great the point. meekness of wisdom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not that wisdom is wrong. It's that it needs to be a wisdom from above. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. How, how do we how do we maintain that uh, that uh, character? Like, right? How do we how do we discern through that? Uh, we live. Uh, many of us live in the, in the Western world, in the developed world, and the wisdom that we attain is for monetary and for economic right. success and for prestige and for social standing. And we can easily, many young adults out there, get swept in that yeah. world of wisdom. Mm -hmm. How do we calibrate? How do we discern? How do we, we can't reject it, as you say all together, right, Siku, right? Mm -hmm. we, we can, I'm like, well, I'm not going to be part of capitalism anymore. Right. Uh, hello, you got to eat. Well, I'm not going to eat anymore because, you know, the Pharisees ate. <laughs> no, no. So you, you can go super extreme. Right. How, and I'm, I'm using Ooh. hyperbole, but how, yeah, do yeah. We, how do we discern? How do we navigate through that, Kelly? I... The, my answer is we have to we have to compare it with scripture. Mm. We have to compare it with what we what we have as infallible and perfect, and say does this does this make sense in this context, or mm. does this seem to be contrary to scripture? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm experiencing this a lot more than I have in a long time because um, so right now I'm, I'm a software engineer, and I work with people who are not Christians, let alone Seventh Day Adventists. Mm -hmm. But most of my career has been with working with Seventh Day Adventist Christians. Mm -hmm. So we've all even if you know we make mistakes, we still have all the same worldview and the same advice and we can give each other Bible verses. <laughs> but now I'm doing things in, in my work and I'll ask for advice, for career advice, or how to go about working with somebody difficult in the workplace. Like, what do you guys suggest? And they give advice and I'm like, I don't know if that's good advice anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, you should take care of yourself. I'm like, I, I do, mm -hmm. but also, hmm, I'm not sure how to handle this. <laughs> and so it, I'm finding myself in a very, it's a very novel situation for me mm -hmm. because I am like, but they're, they're so sincere. I know these people care about me. Like they are trying to guide me in a good way, but is their advice still self-seeking mm -hmm. or is it actually the wisdom that descends from above? Mm -hmm. And so, but the way I've been figuring that out is with prayer and Bible study because they say, okay, yes, like I know I need to take care of myself in a way, but at the same time, my obligations aren't just to myself. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. to my God and my community. Mm -hmm. And so 
figuring that out comes by, again, just, yeah, just searching scripture and saying, like, does this match up with other things Jesus has shown me? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really key way we can know the you difference. You know, Justin, to even add to Callie's point, right there in, in the text, um, in the verse, you see several qualities to help you make that discernment. Okay. Yep. It's as if he senses this question. Mm -hmm. In verse 15 in, or 14, in 15, he's giving you what, if you see these things, this is the wisdom you need to avoid. Mm -hmm. If you see bitter envy, right? People are doing this for jealousy. Listen, this is how you're gonna crush that person, <laughs> take their position, mm. take their wife, you know, whatever. <laughs> And then you have people who are like self-seeking, that selfish ambition in their hearts, like I'm gonna be the greatest, I'm gonna own an NBA franchise, like I'm gonna be this and that and the third. I've heard people say these things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. imagine, and it's yeah, like, right? I'm gonna own a franchise. Like, world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go to, to verse 15 and he says, it's earthly, it's sensual, and it's demonic. Mm. And I think about the business settings I've rolled in and the way that Sometimes, you know, we are walking to the elevator back to our hotels and you're with a group of males who mm. just begin to objectify women you were just sitting at the table with, mm. you know, in the elevator. Oh, did you see such and such a person? Mm -hmm. And you're like, wedding ring on your finger, wedding ring on your finger, you know, and it's like, yeah, but that's just what we do, right? That's, that's, that's <laughs> you know. Um, that's how we go. And then James goes forward to say where you see envy, where you see self-seeking, confusion and every evil thing are there. That's what you avoid. But then he goes into purity, into peaceableness, gentleness, willingness to yield. Mm. These become those qualities that help me to see if I see these things, this is the type of wisdom I want to lean into. Mm -hmm. Those two phrases of, of envy and self-seeking self 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 mm -hmm. are repeated in 14 and 16. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It seems to be duly emphasized. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the opposites are, of those are found in, in 17, where the opposite mm -hmm. of envy, the opposite of self-seeking are, yeah. are, are helping others and, and, and peace and, and, and more, more some of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, your point really points at verse 18, or it's the fruit, and I'm thinking, there, there, it's required for us to sit down and think and watch. And some of these people that we revere of whatever systems we're a part of, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's the programming world or the NBA world <laughs> or the, the mo mothering world, I don't know, like whoever, whoever we're in. And then like, man, what's the fruit of that system of, of that person's life? What's mm -hmm. the character of that life? Mm -hmm. And yeah. we, we do not judge that person's salvation, but we do yeah. discern whether that there's wisdom there and is of a heavenly character or not. That's necessary. Yeah. We live in a day where like, no, don't judge. And then and we go to the extreme of don't even discern, mm -hmm. right? Everything mm -hmm. is neutral. Mm -hmm. But no, the values need to be evaluated. Yeah. Yeah. And not everything is, is legit. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, um, the, the fruit, um, but I was thinking like when you talk about envy and self-seeking, it's, it's not necessarily like the fruit, what you see on the outside at the end result, it's kind of the motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. What, yep. what is it that, that is driving you to do this? Because on the outside, you may be doing the same thing. You know, like you're uh, in the business, you, you're both investing, you know, right. you're both investing in the same product or whatever. Yep. But like, what is it that's driving you? What is the driving force? Um, I, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who's into like all this business stuff. And and um, one of the things that I keep hearing would keep hearing is, you know, this is how you can avoid paying taxes. And this is how you can avoid yep. paying taxes. And this is how you can avoid paying taxes. And after a while I sat down and said, why are you always trying to avoid paying taxes? You know, like mm -hmm. it doesn't really make sense. So who's supposed to pay taxes? And it's kind of what's what's <laughs> no, like but like what's under what's underneath that? And it's like, well, yeah. that's how you make the most money. money. Right. Yep. Right? right. And really at the at the root of it is self seeking. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you're thinking about how do I benefit the and, most? And in that case I think you're right. It's self seeking not to pay taxes of the government. But it, but it's saving money in itself is not a bad thing. Right, right, right. But right, even right. we gotta we gotta evaluate. Am I saving money? so that I can give back to the Lord's cause, or am I saving money so that I can go gambling on the weekend? And that's right? why I was saying, it's at the, the same it may look externally the mm -hmm. same, like, oh, yep. which, right. well, yeah, I'm yeah, saving yeah. money, yep. you know, that's don't give away money, strategy. yeah, yep. if you're not that's trying right. to give away money, just, and then when you dig deeper, that's why I was saying, it's, it's, it goes deeper than just what's on the surface, yep. right? Okay. Yep. It goes deeper to what's the motivation, because yep. then if all you're trying to do is avoid giving money because you're self-seeking, yep. right. that's going to show up in other places as well. And yep. if that's your motivator, if that's what the, at, the, at the base of it, then the kind of wisdom that comes out of it is not just going to be, oh, this is how you can save money on your taxes. It's yeah. going to be also, 
how you don't give to people. Like right. somebody right. comes asking for something, you gotta look out for numero uno, yeah. right. you know? Yeah. It, it, it shows up in other places and that wisdom, because the, the root of it is corrupt, mm -hmm. the fruit of it is gonna be corrupt. So we got a minute and a half and I wanna ask this question before we conclude. Like how, we've been talking about wisdom, 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 bad wisdom, wisdom, wisdom good wisdom, wisdom, and then MBA wisdom, whatever wisdom. Uh, <laughs> how do we get heavenly wisdom. Ask God. How do we, so we ask God, yes. and then, and then what? And do we, we wait it. for a UPS <laughs> delivery uh, in God. two days, and boom, and you got this wisdom, how do we get it? Faith takes God at his word. Okay. When James 1 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom. So you wisdom, believe and you yeah. live as if you are wise. Yeah. Okay, then I am Solomon like right now. Is that what is it? Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe that's no. pre presumption. No, but it's if, if Jesus, God promises it in James 1 5, so you ask for so it, you believe ask it. Ask it and you claim it. And then you live in faith. There you go, guys. That's it. We need to be wise <laughs> in this worldly world that we live in. We need to discern and navigate through the temptations of our worth of our words, of our values, of all this junk that we live in. We need clarity. We need the word of God to be shining directly into our lives. That's my prayer. I know that's the prayer of my teammates. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Hopefully Amen. that's your prayer. We thank you so much for joining us as we have concluded studying chapter 3 of the book of James. Now we're going to jump to chapter 4, and who knows where James is going to go. We want you to read with us and study with us as we look at the book of James next week here in Inverse. God bless you.